Hi, Honors College first year students. Thanks for taking a little time to watch our fall welcome messages. On the cusp of your first day of classes, we've assembled a few people to welcome you that represent our leadership, our alumni, current students, faculty, and staff. All really important parts of the Honors College community you're joining. We want you to know how glad we are that you chose MSU and that you're here, even though you aren't here just yet. We wish you all the best as you begin at MSU. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Matt Zeeler, the Interim Dean of the Honors College. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Michigan State University and the Honors College on behalf of our current HC members, our alumni, and the many faculty and staff members in the HC and throughout the university contribute greatly to honors education. Now that you're here at Michigan State, this convocation marks the beginning of another stage of life, even if we are welcoming and working with you under different circumstances. Yet despite our times, you'll be able to take advantage of a myriad of opportunities, in part because of the wonderful support we receive from friends and alumni of this great university. The Honors College is indebted to our many alumni and friends of the college. These individuals who have gone before you often, the, often credit the Honors College with their success. We've had alumni who've become Rhodes and Marshall Scholars, Truman, Udall, and Goldwater Scholars. We have alumni who are university pres presidents and provosts, alums who teach and research at top universities across the world, alumni who run Fortune 500 companies, those who hold political office, and those who volunteer in their communities. We also have alumni who provide generous financial support to the causes, institution, and people who matter to them most. You will undoubtedly join their ranks and add your own story to those who proudly claim the Honors College as part of your MSU experience. We always want to be cognizant of what others have done to help us achieve our goals. True leaders are always recognize the strength of those around them and seek to help others achieve their own success. We hope that you're beginning to see a theme and that is that MSU cares about you and is willing and able to help you reach your personal goals and everyone has their own path through the Honors College and MSU. Just to share a little bit about myself, I'm a faculty member in James Madison College teaching international relations. While I have my doctorate in political science, my undergrad degree was quite multidisciplinary, which gave me the interests, skills, and tools to adjust my teaching, research, and leadership in many different ways over my career. Keep your own minds open as you can never know all the opportunities that might await you. No matter your major, there will be opportunities throughout your time at MSU to engage in issues like research, arts and culture, international study, community service, and a host of co-curricular activities. Many of you are already active and conscious citizens we hope you continue and intensify your commitment to others. The Honors College values service deeply. We fully expect that you will, in your own way, give back to your communities and the Honors College all that you receive. You are the future and it will be all that you can make of it. Dream big and reach even higher for it is all within your grasp here at MSU. You join the other Honors College members already here as MSU students. You will be among about 4,000 Honors College members learning at Michigan State University and a college that began back in 1957. You will find these individuals just as talented and intriguing as you are and ready and willing to assist you in a variety of ways. You will also join with a very large number of distinguished former Honors College students, our alumni, who are engaged across the globe in an incredibly wide variety of exciting endeavors. Closer to home, there are HC alumni and the faculty across the university. I'm certain that you'll find them to be a wealth of information and support. Thanks to all of you who have attended and participated in this virtual Honors College Convocation and the students and staff who put it all together. Congratulations on your accomplishments thus far in anticipation of those to come. Enjoy the journey you are beginning and make the most of your experience. Once again, we proudly welcome you. How's it going? I'm Dr. Davo Banasali here in my office in Hudson Yards, New York City. I'm a board certified dermatologist, a venture investor. I run a few tech companies and a couple skincare lines, but more than anything, I'm a Michigan State Spartan. 
I wanted to welcome you personally to Michigan State uh, for the first step in a long but fruitful journey. I know this is kind of crazy and um, kind of bizarre to be doing these things virtual, but I promise you, the next four years of your life will be the best four years of your life. You're gonna meet people that become family, you're gonna have experiences that become stories you'll share forever, and I promise you it will get better. Um, my only piece of advice would be just jump, take that risk. For the next few years, take those classes you otherwise wouldn't take, have those experiences you otherwise wouldn't have. This is where you're gonna grow. And if you missed up a little bit, we'll be back here to take care of you, make sure you get to where you need to be. You know, it's, it's fun. I miss the days at Michigan State so much. I miss my family there. Um, but once you're part of it, you're part of it forever. And my last little saying, and one thing I wanna leave you with is, I just want you to remember this. Not only now is anything possible, but everything is possible. Why? Because Spartans will. I'll see you soon. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to start by saying congratulations to you all for getting into the Honors College and for making the best decision of your lives to come to Michigan State University. It really means a lot to me that I'm able to speak with you. Since three years ago, I sat in your seats, well, not exactly in your seats, but in your metaphorical seats, and I am so happy that I might be able to share some of the knowledge I've gained with the next group of Honors College students. At my freshman convocation, I remember listening to the speakers and reading their bios and thinking that they had to be lying to us. There was no way that they could keep their grades up and study abroad and be involved in research and run a student org and still have a semblance of a social life. And even if they weren't lying, there was no way that I could do that. But here we are three years later, and I have participated in multiple student organizations, conducted and published my own research project, studied away in New York and abroad in London, and I have a social life. Well, at least I think I have a social life. <laughs> and I would like to share with you some of the best advice I have gotten in the past three years to help make this possible. First of all, you cannot be afraid to ask for help. Some things are confusing. I'm not sure if they explain substitutions and honors experiences to you yet. If not, trust me, it's confusing. As an honors college student, you have access to an honors college advisor, uh, honors advisor for your major and your college advisor. Use them, they want to help you. I also know that some college professors seem scary and some of them really are. It is still their job to help you and they won't know that you need it until you ask. So do. Secondly, take advantage of being on a large campus. Being at a school with 50,000 students means there are things that you might never find out about. I'm a senior and I'm still surprised sometimes about the things that happen on campus. But it also means that there are more opportunities than you could ever use. That is an advantage. Any question you want to answer, you can join a professor working on that research project or you can start your own project. Any place that you can think about going in the world, MSU probably has a program there. The Honors College and your individual colleges have a lot of scholarships for research and for studying away and abroad, so please get out of your hometown after, after the pandemic <laughs> and see something new. Finally, if you do nothing else that I have mentioned, get involved on campus. When you go to Spartan Spectacular, have a look around. You can get involved in student government through ASMSU or celebrate diversity through the Corps and Cops groups. You can join an acapella group or a dance team. If the outside university is too big and scary, know that the Honors College has amazing student orgs and I promise we are all nice. I'm not biased at all about HDAR, which I just happen to be on the leadership team for, but HDAR is amazing and you should all check us out um, and the other honors college clubs and organizations. Clubs like HDAR has made the last three years the best years of my life. And I look forward to meeting our new members and hearing your stories. Thank you so much for your time. And I can't wait to see you all around. Go green. Hello, my name is Professor Jean Wald. I was asked to talk with you today for a few minutes, but I must say, this is certainly a strange situation, isn't it? 
I started to record my talk, but here I was talking to my computer, looking not at you, but at my computer. And the only person I saw was myself. It didn't take me any time to realize that I'd much rather be seeing you. So I decided to partially solve that problem by putting up photos of the students in my two honors classes that I'll be teaching this coming semester, most of whom are entering the honors college this fall. That way I can be looking around at at least some of you, like Carly, or Santa, Rebecca, or Connor. These are the times we are in, certainly a strange time for you to be beginning your college careers. Now back to my talk. A few years ago, I spoke to the entering Honors College students. So much of what I will say here comes from that time. The idea is that perhaps I could provide you with words of wisdom or reflections on some of my experiences with Honors College teaching and students. I spent some time thinking about various options and tried to imagine what I could say that would be best. I could talk about some of the Honors College courses that I have taught over the past many years. I could talk about any one of the impressive students I met in those courses and follow them through to where they are now. Or I could talk about the mathematics department advanced track program, a degree program entirely devoted to an honors level, in-depth and exciting examination of mathematics. I could focus on the academics in that program, or I could focus on the sense of community in our advanced track majors. Or I could choose to talk about the exciting research projects our program offers, for example, where one of the students used mathematics to help improve the accuracy of cancer testing results. On the other hand, I could talk about our department's exchange program with China, where we bring in Chinese, the Chinese analog of you, honors college students at their universities who spend a semester here taking courses with our own honors college students and working on research projects together. Possibly I should bring up the Math Learning Center and how so many of our Honors College students have found a perfect blend of a job that uses their academic expertise and is critical in helping other students here succeed in their academic endeavors. After going back and forth for a while, I realized I have no idea what would be best. What would be best to say to you? What I might say that would resonate? And then it finally dawned on me, I should ask. So I emailed about half a dozen of my honors college students to see if they were around and might be available to talk with me. Three hours later, I was talking with four of my students. I asked them to go back in their minds to when they were in your seats at their honors college convocation and think about what it was that was said to them. They told me that the honors college had done a great job of making them aware of the many opportunities available to them, the many faculty members who would like to work with them and of reminding them about how talented they were and their potential. My students said they had learned about many very interesting research experiences. I asked what else they thought would have been helpful to hear, and then, to my surprise, they said what might help really was if I would talk about failure. I will admit this was not on the list of topics I had been considering. But of course, they weren't really talking about a 0.0, .0 failure. They were talking about failure to get a 4.0, failure to be perfect, fear of failure to measure up to some perfect or near perfect standard. And most importantly, the consequences that this fear of failure could have for each of you. A big consequence, and perhaps the most damaging consequence of fear of failure, is a reluctance and sometimes refusal to take risks. They said I should talk about getting your first grade that is not nearly perfect. Then one of my students immediately said that she, had she heard this when she was in your shoes, she might have heard the words, but would have said to herself, this did not apply to her. I asked why. She replied she had always done so well in high school. However, a few weeks into her freshman year, it did happen to her. So the question really is, how do you deal with getting a grade that is lower than you thought possible for you? How do you deal with not getting one of the top grades in the class? What does it mean for you? What will it mean for you? What will you allow it to mean for you? I have worked closely with this particular student throughout the four years she has been at MSU. She was one of the Math Learning Center student supervisors and an exchange student group leader. 
We even sent her to China to visit the Chinese students at their universities and to act as an ambassador for our program. She graduated with her bachelor's degree in our extremely demanding mathematics advanced track program and went on to get her master's degree in mathematics at the University of Michigan. But let's go back. How did this develop? And what did she do when she hit a class that she would tell you happened not infrequently and didn't get that 4.0 on assignment and sometimes didn't get a 4.0 in the class? She did not give up. She persevered. She kept trying and kept taking on challenging classes including some graduate level mathematics courses. These weren't required for her advanced degree, degree in mathematics, but she wanted to learn and she wanted to be stretched. She realized that her goal went beyond obtaining a 4.0 GPA or to always being in the top group in her class. Her goal was to stretch herself and see what she could achieve. And if she took classes where she wasn't the top person, that was not only okay, but it was actually good she reminds me of another honors college student that I had a few years earlier. I met her in her sophomore year when she took my foreign level honors abstract algebra class. I have never seen anyone work so hard. She was a regular in my office hours, diligently working many hours outside of my office for every hour she was there. Later, she told me that I gave her her first 3.5. What did she do after getting that 3.5? She took three more demanding courses from me and then more from others. She too went to University of Michigan for graduate school and obtained her PhD in mathematics there. She and I spent many hours on the phone as she met and conquered one challenging graduate course after another while she was in graduate school. After her PhD, she won a prestigious National Science Foundation fellowship and then went on to a postdoc at MIT. Now she is a tenure professor, professor at the University of Illinois. She stretched herself. She learned what her goals were for herself. She persevered. And her same class was another student, a young man who also struggled. He had self doubts, but decided to stretch himself and continue on. And like with her, I had several conversations with him after he graduated as he faced and then conquered one challenge after another. He was recruited by the National Science Agency, I'm sorry, National Security Agency to work in Washington, DC and became in charge of his own research group at the National Security Agency. All of these people have more than one course in which they received less than a 4.0. All of them decided to persevere and continually stretch themselves to a new level. My four students all chimed in and said, Yes, actually they ended up feeling relieved when they got their first 3.5. The pressure was finally off. They no longer had to be perfect. One of these students, a stand-up comedian in his other life, asked with only a touch of humor if I had ever failed. When I answered yes many times, he said, that is what I should talk about today, my failures. I told him that would take way too long to even get partially through the list of all the times I failed. Went back, tried again, failed again, but sometimes succeeded and came out the conqueror. But I can give you one example, not the first or the last in my long list. During my first year in graduate school, I failed. And here I mean actually failed my first assignment in a graduate complex analysis class. Well, to be honest, Actually, I failed the first two assignments. I couldn't believe it. I had never failed a math assignment. I talked with various people who told me that maybe I should drop the class. However, I decided I wasn't ready to give up quite yet. It took a lot of work, but like my students, I did end up getting through the class. Now, I need to be clear. I am not encouraging or suggesting everyone to go get low grades or to ignore advice from others especially your instructors and advisors. There are times when it is a good idea to drop a class or change direction. And of course, there is nothing wrong with a 4.0 GPA. It is only wrong if you have limited yourself out of fear or avoided opportunities to grow in order to obtain it. It is an unfortunate fact that should you want to go on, apply for scholarships, or to an outstanding graduate program, you will need a high GPA. My four student advisors all have incredibly high GPAs. 
However, there is not a field I know of that requires a 4.0 GPA when you graduate. Every one of my four students has a bright future that has been enhanced by the challenges they took on. Not only because of the knowledge they gained, but because of the strength of character they developed due to the choices they made. The question of how you will deal with failing on occasion to meet up to the standards you or others have set for yourself is even more salient now, given the times you're in. Not only do you have the challenges that college will present to you, you have the challenges of the world situation and in particular of the pandemic. Will you be generous and forgiving of yourself if the stress gets the better of you at times? Will you seek resources to help you turn that situation around or perhaps seek help or become a resource from a classmate in that situation? I'm encouraging you to think carefully about your goals for yourself. What is it that you want from your college? What do you want to find out about yourself? What do you want to develop in yourself? Where do you want to end up, personally as well as professionally? If you think about these questions on and off during the next four years and continue to strive to define and accomplish your goals, you will have strengthened who you are and gotten the most you can get out of your time here at MSU. So this is the message my students said I should convey to you. Don't be afraid of being imperfect. Understand what it is that you want from college and continue to think about it. Take on a challenge and persevere. For it is through a few stumbles that you learn to walk, run, and then fly. The Honors College is about welcoming top students from all over the country and the world. It's about collaborating to work together on the world's most pressing problems. It's about lending a hand wherever it is needed. It's about doing our best, even in challenging circumstances. It's about hard work, determination, and excellence. It's about picking ourselves up when we fail or falter to try again. Members of the Honors College community at Michigan State University value integrity, critical thought, and collaboration. We approach learning with an openness and inclusivity that encourages consideration of diverse perspectives. We aspire to excellence, challenging ourselves, and crossing boundaries of disciplines, communities, and cultures as we innovate for tomorrow. So, Class of 2024, welcome to the Michigan State University Honors College. A community of scholars, dreamers, change agents, helpers, problem solvers, risk takers, collaborators, and movers and shakers. Welcome to the Honors College, where it is an honor to be of service to you all. Until we can be together in person, we're in our hearts and minds. We want to get to know you, even like this. We're ready to help you become you. Welcome. 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 And go green.